In the Kursk region, Ukrainian troops are maneuvering tactics in conducting combat operations. Where the enemy tries to advance, believing that he already has an advantage, we maneuver, conduct a counterattack, win back a number of positions and create a barrage of grey zones so the enemy cannot enter this or that territory. The former head of the Foreign Intelligence Service of Ukraine, General of the Army, Mikhailo Malomuz, spoke about this on the YouTube channel Govorit Veliki Lviv. During combat missions, the Ukrainian armed forces actively use UAVs, HIMARS, M270, eliminating personnel of the Russian army, and also use water obstacles, primarily the Seam River. Accordingly, powerful logistics routes and fortified areas are formed. It won't be easy for the enemy, the analyst predicted. Let me remind you that Putin ordered our troops to be pushed back from Kursk region by October the 1st. But you see, in this situation, none of Putin's instructions worked. So North Korean troops are being sent to Kursk region first and foremost to strengthen the Russian group and not to remove additional forces from Pokrovsko, Kurokovsko and other directions where they will continue to advance. Malomuz also emphasized that Ukraine should practice operations similar to Kursk in other regions of the Russian Federation, in particular in the Bryansk and Belgorod regions. The most important thing is to maintain the element of surprise. But unfortunately, we do not have enough forces and resources to implement such plans. Ukrainian intelligence has reported that there are now 11,000 North Korean soldiers in Russia's Kursk region. Their number in the region is increasing, according to Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. He also reminded that it will soon be three months since the start of Ukraine's operation in the Kursk region. Ukrainian defenders keep the sanitary zone near the border under control. The president emphasized that the Kursk operation has significantly contributed to freeing Ukrainian defenders from Russian captivity. In Kursk alone, Russia had suffered 17,800 casualties over the past three months, Ukrainian commander-in-chief Oleksandr Syrsky said on Telegram, including 6,600 killed. North Korea could not make an appreciable difference, said researcher Olena Gusenova in a new study for the Friedrich Norman Foundation last week. The regime, in perspective, could potentially provide Russia with an additional three to four units, comprising 15,000 to 20,000 soldiers of various skills, she concluded. Even in such a case, however, North Korean assistance is unlikely to change the overall course of the war. The reasons, she said, were political and military. The deployment of a large number of soldiers poses challenges in controlling their movements on the ground, heightening the possibility of desertion or defection. Gusenova wrote, requiring security personnel to closely monitor the troops. The Ukrainian military continues to liquidate Russian soldiers. Over the last day, from November 3rd to 4th, Russians lost 1,300 soldiers at the front. In total, since the beginning of the full-scale war, Russia's losses have exceeded 700,000 soldiers, according to the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine. In total, approximately 700,390 Russian troops have already been killed or wounded in this war. The day before, the defenders shot down 93 Russian operational tactical level drones in the sky. Ukrainian soldiers destroyed 35 enemy artillery systems, 15 armored combat vehicles, 11 tanks, and 1 MLRS of the Russian troops. In addition, Ukrainian fighters destroyed 77 units of motor vehicles and tankers, and 3 units of special equipment. Since the beginning of the full-scale war, the defense forces have also deprived the enemy of 994 air defense systems, shot down 2,629 cruise missiles, 369 aircraft, 329 helicopters, and sunk 28 ships-slash-boats and a submarine of the aggressor. As the general staff notes, 169 combat clashes were recorded during the past 24 hours. The number of combat clashes per day in the Kupiansk direction reached 16. 
The defense forces repelled the attacks of the occupiers in the areas of Golubivka, Sinkivka, Stepova Novoselevka, Kalisnikivka, Berestovo, Zagrazovo, Krugliakivka, Vishnivo, and Pershotrovnivo. In the Lyman direction, our troops stopped nine enemy attacks. The invaders concentrated their main efforts in the areas of the settlements of Grakivka, Turna and Dibrova. The aggressor's aircraft bombarded the areas of Toritsk, Druzba, Petrivka and Dilyivka settlements in the Toritsk direction, and the enemy tried to advance four times in the Toritsk area. 27 attacks, this number over the past day were repelled by our defenders in the Pokrovsky direction. The enemy tried to advance in the vicinity of Myrolubivka, Lasivka, Promeny, Sikhoi Yar, Novogradivka, and Vishnivo. The Israeli military said on Monday its troops were continuing operations in Lebanon against Hezbollah. They claimed IDF troops located terrorist infrastructure, military sites, weapon stockpiles, a missile storage facility, and compounds designated for infiltrating into Israeli territory that they destroyed. Some experts say Israel may be aiming to create a depopulated buffer zone, a strategy it has already deployed along its border with Gaza. Hezbollah began firing rockets, drones and missiles from Lebanon into Israel in solidarity with Hamas immediately after the Hamas-led October 7, 2023, attack on Israel, which triggered the war in Gaza. The year-long cross-border fighting boiled over to full-blown war on October 1, when Israeli forces launched a ground invasion of southern Lebanon for the first time since 2006.